So let's actually dig into our road to WrestleMania. Not a lot of stuff really happened this week that we need to update people on. Um, the Ronda, Becky, Charlotte angle is kind of in a standstill because we already know the matches. Becky's in the match, Charlotte's in the match, Ronda's in the match. Becky is not really limping anymore, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, but uh, but Rhonda uh, brought her husband Travis Brown into the whole into the whole spiel, and Travis got involved after Rhonda beat uh, Dana Brooke very quickly. She, uh, you know, she had, she they they had the security go after her, and she was fighting the security, and then her husband pulled her into the into the audience so that they could they could get out of dodge and then then he threw a really great f- forearm at one of the security guards and uh and then you know that they, they she got the ultimate ultimate heat which is the woman you know kissing her very sort of gnarly looking husband and uh it's just perfect like that, that whole thing worked for me and you know i don't i don't know i mean they have two weeks left and Hopefully, you know, they don't really screw anything up. Like, I'd be totally fine with Ronda, like, not even doing anything for two weeks so that they don't screw it up. But she has been absolutely perfect for, like, these last two to three weeks. I've just been, like, whatever they're doing with her, I don't know how much of it is Paul Heyman or her or Vince. But whatever it is, like, they've been really on the ball with her character. Yeah, yeah, no, she's been great, and I like the little backstage segment where she's walking in. They had security guards like there to protect her, or whatever, and she's like, "Yeah, we don't even, <laughs> you know." And she got her husband Travis Brown in the mix, so you know, I'm sure she was pretty stoked about that. And yeah, the whole scenario is wild and crazy, and that's what she kind of need building up to this match and building up to WrestleMania. You need these big like moments each Monday or each th- each Tuesday leading up to it. So I don't know, they're doing a great job with this with this three-way match. Now, what do you think about what they did on SmackDown, which was Charlotte and Becky kind of being led into a fight by Kevin Owens? Cause Kev- so, so basically the story is she, they were both on the KO show. Kevin Owens was being Kevin Owens, and he was just his whole thing was to try to get them to fight like that's what he he's like he's like you get you guys know what my thing is is fight owens fight what about fight becky fight and fight ronda fight and eventually they did do the pull apart which when you watch the ronda stuff it's not as believable as the ronda stuff but i didn't really have a problem with the pull apart because you know there's you know the the both women are, are pretty hot but I guess the question I have for you is, do you think Charlotte, because, you know, Ronda kind of stole a little bit of what she was doing by turning heel, because Charlotte was really kind of on fire as the heel, and now she's, she you know, maybe, maybe she's not the, the most hated anymore, and Becky's obviously the baby face, but I, I, what I don't want is Charlotte to get lost in this thing, because, you know, you know I, I think you agree with me, she's just the best one out of the three, but, uh, you know, I feel like and this was also my worry, which is the longer that they do these storylines, like they, you know, that they, they, they do too much, and then, you know, the 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 match actually doesn't get hotter. It gets, it, it could get colder. In this case, I don't think the match in of itself is getting colder, but I think Charlotte may be losing a little bit of steam. She might be losing a little steam in the build, but you know, they only got a couple more weeks. I think she'll be fine. And when it comes to the match, I think she's going to be the best performer of the three yeah and i think she'll stand out at the end so that, that's kind of what i that's that's pretty much what i think too she's but, not gonna win but in the end i mean all three are gonna get over that match yeah when it, yeah absolutely um okay so let's let's dig through some of the rest of this stuff so you had um you had seth rollins uh let me uh let me pull up my notes here for for Seth. So you had Seth face uh, Drew McIntyre on Raw, which was the main event segment before he came. Before actually before the the show start or right when the show started, Brock and Paul Heyman were in the ring and 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 Seth attacked Drew McIntyre and beat him up with a chair, and then he went in the ring with the chair and Brock took a powder. But my whole thing was. 
guess what, Seth? Unless this is a no DQ match, you you're not gonna be able to bring the chair into the ring with Brock, buddy. Like you better you better be ready to to you know to fight. But uh, he had a match with with Drew to end the show, and Brock, uh, you know, Brock just being there kind of caught Seth got caught up. Distraction finish. Seth gets pinned. Drew McIntyre uh, is gonna probably face Roman Reigns, which is where they're leading. But I'm, I, I just want Seth to look strong heading into this match. And he's not look strong. He's basi- he's definitely the underdog babyface here. And I think that's just a tired, tired storyline. And I think he needs to look strong. But uh, they only have two weeks. And I, and I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, he needs to get something on Brock in the next two weeks. Like some kind of physical confrontation between the two. And, and he needs to definitely out quick out smart and you know send brock reading a little bit so there's some some hope for the fans um i thought uh, I, I thought the match was good the main event was good but that that damn distraction finish right it's like that he goes that so much it's i know like, it's so it's like I'm such like a the crutch music, for them yeah it's like the music played he turns around you know claiborne kick boom one two three it was uh, it was kind of like oh man this same old same old kind of stuff. That's what I felt like at the end. Um, uh, it was kind of interesting when Drew came out to confront Paul Heyman and Brock. It kind of got me pumped for that match. You know, <laughs> like for, man, I kind of want to see that because you know, that, like when it comes to like being physical and intimidating uh, figure, like Drew has it right now. Right, he just seems like the guy right now. And just seems has everything going. He can go in the ring. He got a promo. Um, has a, a, a fantastic look. You know, like he he's he has the whole presentation. And I didn't like the whole like chair stuff. I thought it made him look kind of look kind of weak. But then you know, of course he he's the one that was getting his hand raised at the end. So that's yeah. probably just justification of that. But okay, so you just what you just said. Now, what would you rather see? Seth Rollins going to WrestleMania as the underdog beats Brock Lesnar wins the title as you know as the underdog babyface or Brock retains goes into the next show whatever the next show is and Drew turns and goes baby and beats Brock for the title at the next big show which of those two would you rather see um I think I would rather see Drew beat Brock and then you can have Drew as a champion, and Roman and Seth can chase Drew. You know, mm-hmm. I would like to see Ro- Drew actually beat Roman at WrestleMania. And I know that people think I'm crazy to say <laughs> that, but but like it's kind of traditional Japanese booking when a guy comes back from an injury, he loses his big first match. You know, but he's not ready. He, he's not ready. He's not one hundred percent. And you know, I just think you can get away with it. You know. And I, I just don't think beating Drew right now is a smart move. That's why I was kind of hoping he either beat Cena at WrestleMania or destroyed Ambrose at WrestleMania, like instead of Reigns, which I feel like that's a match for later in the year than it is for, for WrestleMania for now. Yeah. I mean, it's WrestleMania next year, but um, but yeah, I just that. Yeah, I hope he doesn't lose. And I know, you know, I know they probably want to feel a good moment. And but I think it's okay. You're gonna have plenty of feel good moments on on the on WrestleMania. And I think, I think, Drew beating Roman Reigns is not a bad thing. I really want them to pick a guy, whether it's Seth or Drew or Braun. Pick one of those guys. And just push them as humanly possible as you can and try to heat them up as much as you can because the, they need more guys who the fans believe in. Everyone knows Brock is a badass. Like, you, you don't have to, you know, he, he is legit a badass. Roman is their top guy. I think everyone knows that. But you need more than just those two guys as believable in the fans eyes and i think it's you know seth drew 
Braun, Bobby Lashley, whoever it is, like you need to heat guys up so that the fans look at those guys as possible contenders because or else your storyline is, you know, underdog baby face who no you know, who Brock Lesnar laughs at every match. <laughs> like, you know, that I mean that they've done that for like what, like three or four big matches for Brock in a row. And it's like, okay, like I get it, but I would love to see Brock look at someone and go, huh, I got to kind of take this guy seriously because he's like legit. And uh, I would love to see that story a little bit more. But anyways, okay. Um, Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. So it seems like they're still steering towards that match. But uh, Kofi was given the opportunity to run the gauntlet against Cesaro and Sheamus and Samoa Joe and Randy Orton and Eric Rowan and at the very end, he runs the gauntlet, and then Vince McMahon comes out and says, great job, you did a fantastic job going through this gauntlet, but guess what, you got one more guy, and it's Daniel Bryan, and then Daniel Bryan beats him, and Kofi is still not with uh, his title match at WrestleMania. So my question to you is, how do they make Kofi Kingston get in this match without it being super corny? <laughs> it's gonna be super corny. And I think that it's been dragged on so long that I think when they finally get there, no one's going to care. I just don't feel like it. You know, I just think it's losing kind of steam. Like another thing for him to get over. It's like they want to build like this impossible wall for him to get over to get this title shot. But it's just, I don't know. I hope they have one more creative way to get people pumped to see Kofi finally get his chance at WrestleMania. But I just, this is one, one of the storylines I'm just, I'm just, not really into at all yeah I, I I've been I feel like I've been a little tough on Kofi uh, and who Kofi doesn't care like he doesn't care if I'm tough on him but I feel a little bad because I know a lot of fans are so dialed into Kofi oh he deserves it and you and I have both said like does he really deserve it or is it like you know should, should you push a guy because he's been here forever or should you push a guy because he's a star? And I, I see the manipulation of the hardcore fan base going and like these fans are getting really frustrated. They're like, God, I'm about to give up on Kofi because I really I was really into this two weeks ago and now you're making him look weak and, and not smart and I don't want to root for a guy who keeps getting screwed. Like, can't you figure out the screw job before it comes, like if you're a smart baby face? And so I am uh, I hope they have something smart because I think that fan base who's been behind this angle needs a, needs a good payoff, right? Or else they'll just feel manipulated. And I don't know if that's necessarily what you want to do with the uh, hardcore fan base here. But uh, moving along, uh, what did you think of Triple H and Batista's with Batista's interview about why he wants the match and Triple H always treating him like the muscle and never respecting him and all that stuff? Uh, this is the weakest part of the storyline so far. It just, I just, this is one of those other storylines that just is not a, not a belief. It's like all of a sudden this comes out. It's just, a, it's a really forced storyline and I thought this is Day's weakest performance of the three so far so I hope they come back with something better next week because I, I really wasn't into this interview with Michael Cole at all I thought it was pretty pretty weak I thought it was pretty weak all, all in all do you feel like Batista is cutting a promo or is he trying to act acting it, right that, that's what i feel like too i think he's trying to show us that he's a good actor and all i want to see is a batista promo well i mean he's a good actor though like no he is but like i want to see like the fiery like batista promo i don't want to see him be a thespian for you know for three and a half minutes on raw when it's all goofy stuff no you know all throughout yeah. the show no, no this last week on raw bad his stuff previously was was pretty good like i liked his little instagram video that he did that promo and stuff like that he showed some really good acting there but but um yeah this one ah nope this was uh this was a kind of a boring segment like i was i was i was watching it 
and I found myself drifting like I wasn't really caring mm -hmm. as much as I was a little more interested in what was going on in the last couple of weeks. But but all but overall though, I just think this is just a forced like storyline. If it was like big Hollywood Dave, you know, that showed up in November leading to all this, I think it'd been a lot better. Okay. Why can't the story be that Dave just says, look, I did everything I possibly wanted to do in WWF. There was an opportunity to go to Hollywood. I wanted to try that out. And I was fairly successful. And when I wanted to come back to WWE to do something else in WWE, Triple H and Stephanie laughed at me because they didn't think that my movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> was important enough it, that, that it was going to be successful. They, they, they didn't believe in me, and that really pissed me off, and it made me want to be the best version of Drax the Destroyer that I could, but it's always been in my craw, and now I want to come back because I want to show them you know, that they were wrong. Like, why can't the storyline be something like that, which is, it is actual reality, and it 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 takes us outside of the WWE universe for a second, and it goes, and we go, oh yeah, that, that's real life. Like, that's actually something that happened. I feel like, for whatever reason, they're trying to tell us that story without telling us that story, and I'm not exactly sure why. Yeah, the whole, like, Batista quitting stuff is just ridiculous, especially when the guy is, like, a big-time Hollywood star now. And I just think it's – it's that's, that's kind of far-fetched. Like, he quit, and, and people are going to understand. Like, but no one really knows, like, he quit, or he didn't really quit. He just got a better opportunity, and he took a chance. He's an older guy, and he's, you know, a lot of capitalize on the Hollywood stuff. And he did really well. He got in a role that made him a big star, and – you know, featured in other films and doing really well. He's a good actor. Like, you know, like if you watched Blade Runner 2049, like he had a small part, but it was a, I mean, he was great in that small part. So, yeah, you're right. It should be a little more reality based, but the reality base is just kind of like one of those so inside that I don't think a lot of fans are really, really getting. And the other thing about this is like, like Vince McMahon, okay, yeah, this is, this is getting a little bit inside baseball here but okay the the idea of vince mcmahon as this creator of superstars like that's what he wants people to know him as right he's this great marketer he creates bigger than life characters and he's the best at doing that right like that's kind of his mo now isn't it doesn't it show that he is absolutely the best at doing this if we acknowledge that Rock, John Cena, and Batista are all movie stars and they came from WWE and they're basically playing a version of their character from WWE. Why do we not give why why does WWE not give credit to that idea? And why, why are they so standoffish when it comes to that stuff? Like, why, why don't we talk about Batista being a great big movie star? Why don't we talk about John Cena being a big movie star? Like, that is actually the best um, credit to give Vince McMahon in creating stars. It's like, you created a star, and then they took it to Hollywood and, and became, you know, just as big or bigger. Like, why don't they acknowledge that part of it? Maybe because, maybe because Vince is not getting any money off those movies. You know? <laughs> There's nothing for him to promote. Like if he's not getting a dollar. Why does he waste his time for it? You know, but that's the one they can think of. You know, state they don't like to put over what's not theirs. Or Vince never been like that, right? When it comes to you know past stuff, but like you know, you know he likes to change characters to fit his. You know, version, you know, or, or that character, you know. So yeah, yeah. I just think it's like, it's the ultimate. 
it's the ultimate acknowledgement that Vince is really good at that is when these guys become even bigger taking his blueprint. And I, I, I'm like, why don't you just acknowledge that? Because it shows that you are the star maker that you think you are. But whatever. Uh, okay. AJ Styles, Randy Orton, not a lot of stuff going on. I think we both think that's going to be a really strong match, and it's probably the match that I'm looking most forward to at WrestleMania. We'll, we'll talk about that as more stuff comes out about it. But um, what did you think of Kurt Angle's announcement about Baron Corbin? I think it's a fake out. I, a lot I, of people think that. I think that, you know, I don't know what or who. It could be Cena. It could be some other people. Um, my 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 suggestion of Charlie. Ha- I didn't actually suggest Charlie Haas, but I was just wondering what he was doing at this point because you know the whole team angle thing. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be him, but you know, I think it's. I think he's going to destroy Baron Corbin, and and a surprise will come out. Who I'm not sure, but you know, there's a short list of guys in that role, right? That could be something special for Kurt Angle to wrestle. Doesn't have to be a long match. Um but yeah, I, th- I think I, th- I think I think they have something else planned. I think the idea is to get people to be like, huh. That's it. That's the opponent. I mean not like Baron Corbin is not a bad wrestler or anything like that. It's just like when you're building up this big last match, you expect some big big you know name to oppose him and you say baron corbin and it's like you know i think they want the crowd to be deflated because they're going to get a special surprise at wrestlemania that who i just don't know i just think they're i think think, think this this is awfully suspicious i think they're really WWE is really into or vince is into playing with the fans right now Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this is another moment where he can play with the fans so uh, John Cena is supposed to be wrestling on the show, but we don't know who. It could be Kurt. Totally could be Kurt. Yeah. Um, so Samoa Joe is facing Rey Mysterio. Um, mm-hmm. That should that should be a fun match, though. I think Rey and Andrade originally in the hair versus mask match would have been so much better. But look, Samoa Joe and Rey Mysterio is going to be good. They probably won't get the time that they would on like a, another pay per view, but it'll st- it'll still I be think- a good match that match that if they do the hair versus mask match down the line it, it needs to be on a, a show where they could have a little more time for their match because yeah for sure thrown on this wrestlemania when it has 156 matches like <laughs> it's only going to get six minutes it's, that's not what match you need that's not what you need for a hair versus mask match you know it needs at the minimum a good 20 minutes or 18 to 20 minutes yeah. so yeah you know, i'm okay with it being on a a Money in the Bank, or even a SummerSlam we would be good. Uh, what did you think of uh, Ray having his son in his interview segment on SmackDown? Like, just out of the blue. Like, oh, Dominic's there. What do you What do you say, Dominic? You know what? I didn't really watch SmackDown, so, so you have to fill me in. Was, did he do anything? Didn't do anything. Just got his son on the show just was like hey what's up man his son's wrestling right he's training to be a wrestler at that at, at the i think it's team 3d school i believe i think he also he, he also did something with lance oh, okay so, so may, or, or maybe maybe it was lance that that he was training with but basically what the funniest part of it was you know ray's like five five i think mm. and so dominic next to ray looked like he was like seven feet tall but he, I mean, he's probably like six, at least six one, six two, maybe. Uh, Does he look like a good athlete? Like, look like a wrestler? I mean, I got, now, now he, I want to go back and check him out. Looks like a young, he looks like a young kid. He's he's still he still looks really young, but you know, he just looks like he just looked like Ray's like really gigantic son is what he looked like. <laughs> is he still confused about who his father is? <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because some people who didn't know about that storyline, because, you know, they, for whatever, they're younger or whatever, they started going back to, like, what is this stuff about, you know, Dominic and, and Eddie and, and Ray and Vicky? Like, I missed all this stuff. What happened? Like, they're all in, into that part. And I was like, just go back and watch the TV on the network. It's all on. It's all on there. Um, okay, so uh, quickly, let's go through some of these other matches. We can talk about them a little bit more next week. 
but um, uh, so uh, Asuka is going to defend her SmackDown title against the winner of Mandy Rose, Naomi, Carmella, and Sonya Deville. It really is unfortunate that Asuka is like one of the best wrestlers in the whole company, and she is going to be in a pre-show match against one of those four women. We talked about Mandy Rose. Mandy Rose got her chance at the last show, didn't have a great match. I don't know who's going to win this, but I, I mean, maybe what happens is is uh, Lacey Evans gets in there some 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 way, and maybe she wins the match. I, I mean, it's 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 not going to be anything special, and Asuka, you know, is deserving of something that is really really special. So it's a four way, right? Yep. And it's the two teams, but one team is having issues. I remember reading the results for SmackDown, and Sonya Deville and Manny Rose are on the outs or having some problems or something like that. If I if I yep. remember correctly. Yep. Hmm. So I'm trying to figure out who would be in this match. I mean, it could be the Iconics or at least one of them, but I just don't see that happening. I see them in that multi. Yeah, yeah, match. they're they're already in that tag team title match with uh, with Mandy. Um... Just got a shot, Oscar. So that kind of leaves Sony Deville as the favorite. But what do you think about this? What if there's a double pin? Mandy pins Peyton Royce, Sonya pins Billy Kay, and then it's a three way at uh, at WrestleMania. Not like I mean, there's intrigue. There's definitely intrigue if they want to do the blow off there with their relationship. Not like yeah, but I just think maybe something like that or something like that will happen out of it because I feel like you're gonna try to put you know. WrestleMania is going to be the multi mania. Oh, God. Multi match mania. This is like well, WrestleMania hey, 2000 all over again. I just feel like that's what it feels like because they have so much, they have so much talent and they have a, you know, a, you know, 24 hour show. They got to sit all these matches. It's just I know. ridiculous. I know. I, I'm going to watch this with the, with, over the week. <laughs> a match a day. <laughs> we just, if I have to. <laughs> um, so, what about my idea, which is you take Shayna. One one day, so Mandy Rose comes out, and Shayna's there, and you're like, "Wow, what's Shayna doing there?" And the entire thing is like they just replace Sonya Deville with Shayna, and we pretend that Shayna's been there the whole time, and it's always been Shayna. That's that's my idea. Let's let's get Shayna involved, because what? because because of she like this is this is like um. Uh, what's the famous uh, the be- Bewitched, right? With the two Dar- with the two uh, Darrens. Um, there's been other TV shows. They the Fresh Prince Bel Air. They had uh, two Aunt Vivs, right? So Shayna just becomes Shayna, and she just replaces Sonya Deville, and we don't even explain it. We just presume that she's been there the whole time. We pretend that she's been there the whole time, and at least we get Shayna on SmackDown. That that's my idea to get to get Shayna out there. I'm gonna say that Shayna will debut the next night on Raw after Mania and choke out Becky Lynch. That would be during awesome. Her, during her celebration, and that'll be Becky's new new challenger, or maybe uh, or maybe Charlotte comes out to confront Becky, but then Shayna and the other four horsewomen take out take out them too, and then you know you have that or something like that. I'm in. I, I like it. So a couple other matches. Uh, Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. Tony Nese won the tournament, uh, the 205 Live tournament. He beat Cedric Alexander in the finals. Uh, I, it's going to be another pre-show match, but Buddy Murphy is so good. Uh, maybe Tony Nese wins this this match and Buddy Murphy moves up or changes brands or something because I think he needs to be showcased. He's much better than, uh, than, than what they do with him. Um, yeah. Shane McMahon against The Miz. Shane came out and said that uh, the reason he turned is uh, because he's he doesn't want to be the nice guy and help everyone anymore. It was really like a non-explanation. Another non-explanation. Yeah. yeah. So I was not impressed with Shane's interview, but the thing I was most impressed with is they showed a, a highlight package on Raw promoting WrestleMania through this match. And Shane was in those, uh, you know, we don't we don't we we don't call them wife beater tank tops anymore, but that's what people know them as. He was just in like that white tank top. Traps were like 
coming out of his ears. It was ridiculous. I was like, holy cow, this guy is training for WrestleMania right now. Um, and then, like I mentioned, Bailey and Sasha against um, Natalia and Beth Phoenix, who's coming out of retirement. Again, and uh, also against Nia Jax and Tamina, and then Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. So there are at least four teams in that tag team, women's tag team title match. Sadly, it doesn't look like I'm going to get Trish and Lita in that match. Or maybe you will. Maybe it's one more team. <laughs> <laughs> the overbooking of all overbooking. Mm-hmm. I just figure with Beth coming out of retirement, that's probably the the one throwback you know person they want. Um, and then we have the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. The only person that we, I think we know is that Braun Strowman is in that match. Uh, and then the Women's Battle Royal is also going to happen. Uh, I don't. I mean, two Battle Royals, both of them are going to probably be on the pre-show. I don't know. The, this match, the, this is like a nightmare trying to think of what the match order is going to be. So there has and there has to be Lashley versus the Demon, Finn Balor. <sighs> How though? Like it's so it's, it's cold. It's to that. But it's so cold. Like I'm just saying, that's that, I, I do. I put it together the other day. I don't know why I was thinking about it, but I was. And I'm like, I kept thinking, like, it's just it, it kind of funny to me that every time Finn Balor gets in the ring with Lashley in tag matches or in single matches, like, Lashley just eats his lunch. Yep. And at first I thought maybe it was just like a, you know, Finn didn't see, like, Finn at, at Lashley's level or... Or what? But I think it's just because the human, <laughs> as ridiculous as it sounds, the human Finn Balor, Mr. Second Place, you know, happy to be second place, like, he can't beat Bobby Lashley, but the demon can. That That is fine. But I also feel like Vince McMahon's like, you know what? We need to beat the demon so that we're not handicapping our booking, and he's gonna lose this match. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what this is, this is what drives this is me. It makes my head explode. Is like, okay, if this is the booking, this is the desired ending. This is what you want to get to the demon. The demon coming back to defeat Bobby Lashley. Why would you do the quickie child change with Finn Balor beating Leo Rush? Like, it's just something to keep it going. That's all it was. It wasn't anything. You know, it's just. Uh, it just was silly. I think, you know what? I wish they would make this Andre Giant Battle Royal mean something a little bit more. Like, I think they it would be nice to not not to do the demon, and just have Finn and Lashley and a couple other quote unquote you know bigger names in the battle royal and and make it on the main card and make it mean something. They should make a tradition where the winner of the Battle Royal gets a immediate title shot the next night on Raw. Like, you have something to look forward to, like, with the winner or something like that, you know? I don't know. I think they should do something cool. I mean, the, it'd be nice to do something special that Battle Royal, make something, make it mean something, you know? I completely agree with you, but I feel like they think, like, well, we're just get, well, we're getting these guys on the show so that they get paid, so that's good enough. <laughs> True, but like instead of like having, you know, you know, sixteen, seventeen matches, you could put some of these bigger names, of course, you know, in this battle royal and make it a really good battle royal. Like, yeah, you you get out the lower end guys fast, but then when it comes down to the final five or six or four, it's a really good match you know with, with with a lot of like you know near eliminations and uh the final two go for a good three to four minutes of great action and 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 and, and the winner not only just wins the the the, the battle royal and it's, they get a trophy but like it's, man why does they would they get a, a title shot the next night on raw or within the next few weeks of raw or something like that so make it important I, okay, I don't know what the writer meetings are like in WWE, like, you know, these long meetings where they come up with all the ideas for all the stuff. But what if when they're running through this WrestleMania card, which, you know, probably has 16 or 17 matches, and they're going through like, okay, what are we going to do here? And Vince is like, what are we going to do for the Battle Royal? And they're like, Braun's winning. He's like, all right, that's it, next match. <laughs> like, do you think they actually 
book this thing with the idea that there's something leading towards the future? I'm guessing this whole thing with Braun and this Battle Royal is just to get to one of those that one guy from SNL to think that he can this is wrestling and it's fake and he could jump in there and have a good old time and but then you're gonna have Brock eliminate him or both of them. I mean Braun, sorry, eliminate both of them. You know, I just think it's something to do with that because they've been building that up, right? Can we get Drew Carey back in? I'm just thinking that's what because like with the SNL guys, the host or whatever the hell they are, not the host, they are the correspondent. The week, yeah, yeah, the weekend update guys you're talking about. I just think, I just think <clears throat> there's something with that, right? That's like their celebrity tie-in, which doesn't mean doesn't feel like a big celebrity tie-in at all. It feels like like yeah, and I haven't really watched SNL in a very long time, and but. So I don't know how popular those guys are, but well, you know what the it, problem is is those guys are actually pretty funny, um, but when they get on WWE TV, the WWE the WWE writers make them not that funny. <laughs> like yeah. that's the problem. Well, because they're 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 made to be they're supposed to be annoying to like it's almost like okay you're gonna be our celebrity guests. Wrestling fans are not gonna like you because you're in their world, so we're gonna make you just annoying and then Braun's going to be the one that's going to make you pee your pants and so that's why I think something's going to have to battle royal with that I think I think it's just it's just this whole battle royal thing is just a backdrop just for Braun to throw those guys around to get that visual for the entertainment weekly or whatever hell whatever's whatever's the news popular thing TMZ whatever it is you know the people go on to watch this crap but I, I it's not going to get it's going to get no one's going to care, though. Yeah. yeah. I will say it's better than Nicholas. Hmm. <laughs> not saying a lot, though. Dude, they, okay. should get, they should get Dana, uh, Nicholas the Dana Warrior Award. <laughs> yeah. Sue, Sue Atchison. Well, no, Nicholas will win it in like 10 years. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, he yeah. should definitely come yeah. back. Okay, so that's the end of our Road to WrestleMania segment. We'll do another one next week. And then, like I said, when we're out there for WrestleMania we'll figure out a day that we're going to record and and uh, hopefully we'll be able to do like one last preview of WrestleMania. 